Okay, again, corrective action. Globally, the biggest problem. TS already says you as organizations should have a defined problem solving process. What should that process take into account? What should the problem solving process take into account? <coughs> So let me, let me read the requirement. The organization shall have a defined process for problem solving, leading to root cause identification and elimination. That doesn't just say for customer problems, that's any problem. The organization shall have a defined process for problem solving, leading to root cause identification uh, and elimination. And then it says, if a customer prescribed problem solving format exists, the organization shall use the prescribed format. E.g. 8D, 9D, 10D, 7D. Whatever the customer prescribed format is, this requirement says you shall use it. So that, that's the, the, the TS requirement. But also, there's a number of other requirements that link to this. What's this requirement got to do with it? <coughs> Customer representative. What's that requirement got to do with corrective action, problem solving? In this requirement, this is saying this is the person who's responsible for communicating with the client. So surely this person should understand what is the customer prescribed format? Management review. Management review should be reviewing the status of corrective and preventive action. So where, where's that included within the process? This customer communication requirement also includes communicating on complaints. Internal audit. What's that got to do with complaints and corrective action? Internal audit. Can we use to Good. Good. Yeah, so we can use audits to do some of the verification of corrective actions. I'm sad, I can remember this requirement. It says when internal or external non-conformances occur, the audit frequency shall be appropriately increased. Think about that, yeah? When you go back, think about it. How often do you review your audit plan throughout the year, taking into account internal and external non-conformities? When internal or external non-conformities occur, the audit frequency shall be appropriately increased. We again are beating auditors up to get them to challenge that requirement because how many audit plans do you see where you're auditing each process once a year? That means you're perfect. Never have a complaint, internal, external, <coughs> never. So you need to think about non-performance and corrective action as part of internal audit planning. Yeah, that is a, a shall requirement in the standard. Control of non-conforming product. Obviously, the first thing we need to do in any complaint or any problem is the containment or correction. We need to be analyzing data. Again, that's quite high in the global non-conformities. We have specific requirements about corrective action, the ISO requirement, additional TS requirements, including the corrective action impact, the impact on other similar processes. And we also have the requirement for preventive action. How are we going to stop actions happening in the first, and problems happening in the first place? So when we talk about this, we're not just talking one clause. This is interdispersed throughout the whole, the whole standard. And you don't have to answer this, but maybe in your head answer this. How effective are you in dealing with customer-related complaints and concerns? 
I would bet out of the three of these, that's the one you're strongest at. Because if you're not, you get beaten up by the customer. They will reject your service. Most companies are pretty well robust on dealing with customer complaints, generally. What about internal product or process concerns? Do you use the same problem solving method that you've used for this? Do you use that same process for here? Do you pay as much attention to those? Maybe not from, from my experience. And the one that's often forgotten about are dealing with audit non-conformities. We've already seen an example of that in the calibration example, internal and external non-conformities. This could be non-conformities from internal audits, system, process, or product. It could be external, which could be third party, or it could be customer. Are we really applying the same problem-solving techniques to get to the root cause of those types of problems? So I don't want to show of hands or anything, but I bet it's number one, you're best at this, number two, you're best at this, number three, you're... it's in that order, I think, in most companies. But this is, I think, where we need to think about strengthening our corrective action processes. Because if you don't, that's where the external audit could find a non-conformity, a major non-conformity, against your corrective action process. An internal audit, the last one, management for the area shall ensure that actions are taken without undue delay to eliminate detected non-conformities and their causes. So we've got it there in 822 in ISO anyway, about elimination. Follow-up activities shall include verification of the actions taken and reporting of the verification results. So for audits, we've got it specified there anyway. Now I'm sure you've all got your own internal problem solving process. And probably if we put them all together, they probably wouldn't be that much different. That we need when we're addressing any problem, not just to address the symptom. We need to try and address the system problem. We need to think about containment, root cause, creative action, preventive action, and then some method of verification. So again, I encourage you for your internal problems, try and state them as a system problem. Because otherwise it'll be back to this calibration example again. This gauge is out of calibration, we calibrated it. This part is out of specification, we fixed it. But that's not what corrective action is about. We should be looking to fix the system problem. So actually getting to the system problem is the start. We need to understand what the system problem is. If you don't already, I certainly would consider for your audits to report them in these three parts. Because that's the way the certification body is told to write their non-conformities. Containment, these are incident specific actions. Has the process only taken containment action on the specific incidents cited by the auditor in their objective evidence? If the customer could be impacted, has the process only put in containment to protect them? So before we think about doing anything, what is the risk? How are we gonna prevent uh, any more problems, immediate problems? Then we're going to apply a problem solving process to get to root cause. Some customers say they want you to use specific methods to get to the root cause. Your process should say how you get to the root cause. But we need to always be able to answer this question. What in our system failed that allowed this to happen? What went wrong in the system? Not just the symptom, what went wrong in the system? Does the corrective action address changes to the system, not just saying it's his fault or her fault? Does it address changes to the system? Are we updating the relevant quality system documents as part of the corrective action? And does the corrective action address the root cause or root causes that have been identified? <coughs> 
and preventive action, what in our system exists that might have the same root causes present? What systems could I have in place that would have prevented this from happening? Can we go back and think about more mistake proofing within a process? And then obviously, we need to, some process to verify the effectiveness of the action that we've taken for any type of non-performance. So the format that we use will depend on customer requirements, but we need to go through the step-by-step -step problem solving for all types of problems. And I think probably most of the major non-conformances have not been about dealing with customer complaints. Because if you hadn't done that effectively, your customer would be. It tends to be on these other types of corrective actions. Remember, that's really what TS is trying to cover. External problems, internal problems, audit problems.